Welcome to another episode of SAP Analytics Cloud. And this time we're going to take a look at how you can use public dimensions. So in the last episodes, we created a model based on a spreadsheet. And all the information was in the spreadsheet. As we can see here, things like order died, customer ID, customer name, country, state, city, all the information is already in the spreadsheet and the model was being created based on this information. But how would it be different if we actually would create the model using public dimensions? And what are the steps we would have to do in a different way if we then load the spreadsheet into the model with the public dimensions? So we're in SCP Analytics Cloud, and the first thing we're going to do is actually create a public dimension. So we go to create dimension, and the first dimension we're going to create is our customer. So we're just going to create a new one. Uh, you can see we only have the options generic, account, or organization. So for example, something like a date is not possible as a public dimension. So we give it a name and a description where you create it, and then we can actually see in the screen that we only have the option for the ID and the description. So here we can see we have a member ID and we have a member description. So if we have a dimension that only has IDs, the description would be empty. Otherwise, we will have the ID and the description in this case. So we're going to save the dimension and we're going to add another one in our case, product. Now the product dimension also has attributes. So we're going to have to add those into the public dimension. So we're going to go again, create dimension. We we'll use the option generic, give it a name and a description. And in this case, we have a product ID, we have a product name, and we also have a product category and a subcategory. So we're going to create two properties. Now you will notice that the property doesn't have the option for an ID and a description. It only has the actual value. So you basically have to consider that when you're uploading the data, your attribute doesn't have an ID and a description. So we're also going to add the product subcategory. So now we have dimension product and we can save the changes and then we can basically go back to the public dimensions. So one of the items we also need to build is our account dimension. So basically where we're going to put in all our measures. So we're going to give it a name and a description. And then we're going to put all the details of our measures into the account dimension, including things like scale and the number of decimals. So we're going to save the changes to our account dimension, and then we can start creating our models. So we have two public dimensions and the other dimension, things like an order ID, we're actually going to add just into the model itself. So we're going to go to create model and we're actually going to start with a blank one. And first we're adding a non-public dimension. So in our example, we're going to add the order ID. So we're adding a new dimension. We'll give it a name. In our case, the order ID. 
we have the option to choose between like generic account date or organization in our case it's generic and we basically keep adding now additional dimensions into our model So is the order date and the shipping dates as part of the data, we're adding those. And we then, when we upload the data, have to make sure we configure the right date format. As part of the model, we can choose the granularity and the default hierarchy. So we're also going to add the shipping date as a new dimension. And also a date, uh, we choose the same granularity, so the date and the default hierarchy, year, month, and date. After that, we're going to take the first public dimension. So we choose the option existing dimension, generic, and we choose our customer dimension. So now we've got the customer dimension as part of our model and we can start adding the other dimension elements like segment, country, region, city, as well as the public dimension for our product, which we created previously. So we got all the dimensions and the date items into the model. So we're just going to go to the properties and configure the time dimension for planning in our example. So which would be the order date. And then we can actually save our changes and start looking at the option to upload the data. So we're just going to give the model a name and save it into the public folder and then we can start uploading the information. So the first thing we do is actually go back to the dimension we created for customer and we're going to upload actually the customer master data. So one of the items that is different was the public dimension. We can also upload master data directly into our public dimension and we can reuse it across models. So in our case, we have a spreadsheet which just has the customer ID and customer names, and we're gonna upload it into the public dimension. So here's the information. And all what we need to do is on the right hand side, we can take a quick look at the quality, but then we go back to the mapping and we simply map our two columns from the spreadsheet to the two columns from our public dimension, the ID and the name. And that's pretty much it, all what we need to do. So now we've got the data loaded for dimension customer and we're gonna do the same thing for the dimension product and then we're going to load the data into the model so we take dimension product in this case we have to have four columns the id the description and also the two attributes So here's all the raw data from the spreadsheet. So now we got four columns that we need to map. So we have the product ID, the product name, the product category and the subcategory, which are our two attributes. So we're gonna map those items to the columns and then we can load the master data for dimension product. So with the data now loaded to our public dimensions, we can now go to back to our model and actually load the complete data. So we select the model from our system. 
Then we go to the data management and we can now upload our spreadsheet that has all the transactional data. So after the data is loaded, we can click on the data set and we've been shown all the dimensions and IDs that the system was able to identify and how it was mapping it already. So as an example, if we look at the order ID, it mapped the dimension order ID to it. On the order date, we can see the values on the shipping date as well. On the customer ID, you can see no details are actually shown because it only needs the ID. You're not going to see a description because that comes as part of the public dimension. So now we can take a look at the other dimensions as well and we can see that the system already was able to map them to the source information. So we can see the country, the region, the state, the city and so on being mapped already. For product, we have the same situation as with customer. No details are really shown because they're not needed. It is a public dimension and we just map the ID to it. If we then last but not least look at our account dimension, so the key figures, you can see we have once key figures and then an item called measures. And we're mapping basically all the measures in our example, which are individual columns in the spreadsheet, to those that are already in the model. So now we can finish the mapping and pretty much load the data into our model in SAP Analytics Cloud. So after all the data has been loaded, we're shown the data management with the one file as an import job. And we can basically go back to our model and take a look how many members now each of the dimensions have. So we just created a model in SAP Analytics Cloud using a mix of public dimensions as well as dimensions generated for a blank model. I hope this helps to differentiate a normal model that you create from a spreadsheet from a model with public dimensions.